Hello, my name is Alex Peel. I'm a lecturer in anthropology at the University of College London. And I'm going to tell you a little bit today about a study that was led by Anne-Sophie Cronchon uh, on vocal communication in wild chimpanzees, a call rate study. Um, all of the data were collected, all of the analyses really were conducted by Anne-Sophie, who's currently in the Democratic Republic of Congo studying bonobos. Um, so I'll be presenting on behalf of her and Fiona Stewart today. So just as way of introduction to long calls, um, these are vocal signals used by various taxa. In mammals, they're used to communicate um, under various social and environmental contexts, alerting conspecifics to predators, maintaining social bonds between individuals, and marking territorial boundaries, among others. Um, but just like food and um, territory, acoustic space is a scarce resource, and often animals have to compete for it. Um, and call rate, or the, the number of calls emitted by an individual per unit time, um, reflects caller quality. Um, the rate changes vary with uh, the sex or the age or the social status of the individual, but also with the group composition and group size, among others. So lots of um, social influences on call rate. And in addition to the behavioral correlates, um, call rates also have implications for the conservation of the species. So animal calling behavior, and even in primates, um, calling behavior varies with um, habitat integrity, for example. So both chimpanzees, and in this case, howler monkeys, um, actually will decrease their call rate um, when their habitat is disturbed. And one can imagine that if uh, these loud calls give away the location of the individual, um, calling might not be the, um, the best behavior to exhibit if you're under threat or worried about, in this case, maybe poaching. Um, so to give you a sense of what that looks like in, in practice, one can imagine deploying what is an increasingly common um, conservation um, method, which is deploying acoustic sensors or these microphone units in an area of interest, um, and then analyzing the sound data that come in, in this case, a bat, but it can be any loud calling individual. Um, but your challenge as a conservationist in this case is to convert the call density, so the, based on the number of calls that we record, into animal density. So how many individuals are there in that landscape? And remember, this is basically targeting individuals that are either cryptic um, or elusive, have vast ranges that researchers simply cannot cover on foot, or, or just not detectable, right? So essentially it's acoustic surveillance. Um, and so locating individuals in time and space tells you about where they are, um, but what, what often we're interested in is how many there are. And to do that, you need to, you need to know the call rate. <clears throat> so the long call for chimpanzees is called the pant hoot. And rather than give you an example of what that sounds like for me, I thought I would show and play it for you. So this is what it looks like on a spectrogram. This is a pant hoot that was recorded by and Sophie and just played through a software called Raven. Um, and this is what it sounds like when you're listening to them out either in the field or back in the lab. And pan hoots function in lots of different ways in chimpanzee um, society. So they are often made when subgroups um, form reunions, when they get back together after having not seen each other for some period. Um, they're often made at high quality food sources when individuals arrive essentially to announce or advertise that food source to group mates. Um, and you often hear these calls right before individuals travel or maybe even when they're traveling. So lots of different ways um, these, these calls um, function in society. For us, for this study, um, we had a, uh, a relatively modest goal, which was one to establish that call rate um, in this community of chimpanzees, but also to investigate the social, social and ecological um, correlates or influences on that call rate um, in a short-term study. So to situate where the study was done, all the data were collected by Anne Sophie in Western Tanzania. This is the Isa Valley where we work. It's about equidistant from Gombe National Park and Mahali Mountains National Park, which some people might be familiar with. Um, the light green you're looking at there, by the way, is chimpanzee distribution. So even though there's only two national parks and really three long-term studies, chimpanzees really are distributed throughout this greater Mahali ecosystem, which is the black outline there. Um, the name of our project is the essentially the GME Ecosystem Research and Conservation Project. It's a really a, a woodland-dominated landscape. It's a Miombo mosaic or Miombo woodland mosaic. 
um, with very drastic wet and dry seasons. So on the left is the wet season um, during the rains, and on the right, the dry season after the fires have come through. <coughs> and it's a very intact ecosystem. So I've mentioned there's chimpanzees, there's baboons, there's red colobus monkeys. Um, there's really a healthy population of other um, ungulates, so hard to beast, uh, bushbuck. I'm sorry that the video is cutting out the eland. Um, and then also um, four species of, of large carnivores, leopards, lions, hyenas and wild dogs. So it's really a nice ecosystem to situate chimpanzees um, with heterospecifics. And so if you follow chimpanzees uh, daily for three or four months for this study, um, and this is not her, but this is essentially what this looks like. So unfortunately I didn't have a video of a chimpanzee calling while somebody was following them, um, but she recorded all loud calls that individuals make <clears throat> over the course of um, a focal follow. So she follows one individual all day, changes that individual over time. I and mean, then at the end looks at the relationships between when these loud calls were made and some of these other metrics that I, I mentioned earlier. So just to kind of quickly run through what we found. So there's lots of <coughs> relationships between this call rate increasing and decreasing. So um, chimpanzee call rate uh, increased as group size increased. Um, and you can imagine when individuals are coordinating movement with a large number of individuals, that requires more communication, thinking about decision making and coordinating um, with groups that are more widely dispersed. Um, it also increased with the number of sexually receptive females. So um, the presence of these sexually receptive females draws males in. It increases aggression between males and males, males and females. And the result is often just screaming and calling by all individuals. So it's not so surprising um, there are those relationships. Um, males called almost twice as much as females, and that's very consistent with other studies as well, probably in relation to what I described just a minute ago. There were also some really interesting um, environmental relationships. So um, chimpanzees call most in the morning and then also at dusk, and this seems to correlate quite well with nesting. So chimpanzees, each chimpanzee builds a new nest every night. And so whether this is to um, aggregate that nesting sites or either to coordinate getting back together in the morning, there were these two different peaks. One can imagine also that um, this is also the optimum time to um, produce these loud calls. Um, people might be familiar with the dawn chorus when, when birds often vocalize. Um, and so whether it's low wind or low insect noise, um, <coughs> this could be just a good way to transmit sounds over, over long periods. We also found that chimpanzees called more in these open mammal woodlands than in the riparian forests. Um, and that's more of a conundrum for us. I think one explanation for that is that in those forests, chimpanzees may be relying on these close contact calls. Um, but in the woodlands where individuals are much more spread out, the food resources are more widely dispersed, um, the party is more widely dispersed, then they rely on these pant hoots um, to basically contact each other and, and potentially coordinate movement or, or behavior. Um, so we're still working on kind of uh, the motivations behind these, but it gives you some idea of, of when chimpanzee call rate oscillates. So I hope that gives you some idea of the implications for call rate for understanding chimpanzee behavior. Um, and there's a lot more that we want to know, of course, about these relationships. Uh, but I also hope that the implications for conservation, not just of chimpanzees, but really of any loud calling species is um, apparent. So. <clears throat> Chimpanzees are one of many different species that produce these, these loud calls, or these long calls, um, and many of the animals that do this are, of course, endangered. And so for any animal that we're trying to understand um, the distribution across time and space, but also how many there are, and monitor that over time, acoustic monitoring is really uh, a means of getting to this ends. Um, and so whether it's you know elephants or, or blue whales or, or chimpanzees, um, call rate is important to understand for their, uh, for their conservation. So thank you for listening, um, for watching, and uh, I've uh, linked the paper below. Uh, so please have a read and let us know if you have any questions. Uh, thank you.